In 2005, the Fourth Road Bridge was investigated and the cables were found to have a reduction in strength of around 10%. This sent alarm bells ringing in the Scottish Government because it's a vital uh, transport corridor across the Forth. So in 2006, the Scottish Government uh, implemented a study to see what the alternative crossing could be or what the replacement crossing could be and the decision was made at the end of 2007 that a cable stayed bridge as you can see was going to be constructed on the alignment just to the west of the existing bridge. The, the Queen's Three crossing has been built as a replacement to the Forth Road bridge. It's a 1.35 billion pound project an amazing project as you can see, I'm, an amazingly, I'm amazingly proud to, to have been part of it all the way through from its design, uh, authorisation stages, procurement stages and through to the end of the construction. The bridge opened on August the 30th and there was an official opening ceremony by Her Majesty the Queen on the 4th of September this year. The contract was built by an international consortia, um, Fourth Crossing Bridge Constructors who are comprised of four different international companies, Hochtief of Germany, Dragados of Spain, American Bridge of America, and Morrison Construction, the local Scottish-based con contractor. So there's a huge number of um, different parties involved in bringing the project together. Over the course of the project, there's been over 15,000 people inducted into the project, and a maximum of around 1,500 people working at any one time on the project as well. One of the main challenges uh, during the construction was to build the foundations and drawing parallels from the fourth bridge, um, the, the south tower and the north tower were built using caissons, which is a big steel tin can without a top and without a bottom. Pushed down through the sediments, down to the rock level, the sediments are removed and then a huge concrete pour is undertaken. And in the case of the south tower caisson, um, it was a world record breaking underwater concrete pour, uh, 17,000 cubic metres of concrete poured over 15 days of continuous pouring. It's a two lane motorway, the bridge, and it has wind shielding, something that the fourth row bridge doesn't have. So what we normally say to people is if you can get to the bridge, you'll get across it. Um, that's a real step change in reliability in getting across the bridge. Um, it has hard shoulders for extra resilience, which the existing fourth row bridge doesn't have. So if there are breakdowns or need to do maintenance works, there's a lot more flexibility. The bridge itself um, is the tallest bridge in the UK. The centre tower is 210 metres high above water level. It's a three tower cable stayed bridge. It has 288 cable stays, which are replaceable without having to disrupt the traffic. Something that the fourth row bridge really suffers from because you can't um, change the cable at all without actually closing the bridge really to do the work. Um, there's enough cable in the cable stays almost to go around the world. There's 23,000 kilometres of cables, um, there's 35,000 tonnes of steel in the bridge and in the case of the centre tower, fan as we call it, with all the cables coming down, we actually achieved the Guinness World Record of the longest freestanding cantilever at 644 metres and that helps to make sure, it helps to um, reduce the, the thickness of the deck and reduce the um, and help to make the towers very slender. So it's a very unique feature and gives it a, a real iconic look to the bridge. The bridge also has a lot of thought put into it for future proofing and ease of maintenance. For example, there's a structural health monitoring system put into the deck and you'd think, what is a structural health monitoring system? But it's a whole series of sensors to, to measure the stresses and strains of the bridge. Um, as, and as the bridge moves in windy conditions or it flexes when the traffic goes over it, we can build up a picture of what that means today uh, as the bridge has just been completed and compare it with what it's doing in 10, 20, 30 years in the future. And that can help us to shape whether we need to do maintenance works or not. One of the other interesting factors is trying to make sure that works are undertaken safely. In older structures, it was quite common for people um, who were going out to uh, maintain and operate the bridge to go out in a road vehicle, stop at the edge of the bridge and then walk out. On the Queensbury crossing, we've designed in facilities in the abutments, the ends of the bridge, where 
the workforce can go into those facilities, into the, actually mini buildings if you like. They can enter into the bridge itself, walk along the bridge or use um, dedicated shuttles to go or any, to any location within the bridge and then do their maintenance and uh, operative works um, easily without interfacing with the traffic. So health and safety has been a, a really big driver of the project and it's not just during the construction phase, it's after opening as well. Um, but it's not, the project isn't just about the bridge itself, there's extensive road connections either side forming a 22 kilometre long managed motorway and that will help to manage the traffic flows to and across the bridge in the years to come. The smart motorway technology that we put in on this project spans over 22 kilometre length. Um, we've allowed for buses to be able to use the hard shoulder on various other sections of the road connections and on the Queensbury crossing itself if buses are taken off because of wind effects taken off the fourth row bridge onto the Queensbury crossing. So there's around 70 overhead gantries along the whole project corridor um, so that we can maintain good vehicle speed, we can improve safety, we can reduce emissions and make a smoother flowing traffic right across the project corridor. So in the, in the building of this bridge, it wasn't all about the civil engineering. There was a huge amount of communications and making sure that the public were aware of what was going on. And one of the key things that the public really like to see are, are webcams. So we had a series of webcams around the project so people could see in real time what was going on at any particular moment. So we built, as part of the project, uh, uh, a contact and education centre. And since that opened in 2013, there's been over 23,000 pupils go through the doors of that facility involved in bridge building and science, technology, engineering and math studies. And overall we've had around 83,000 people involved in presentations, open days and the like um, in and around the contact centre. So a very valuable asset um, uh, to the project. So why am I inspired to do civil engineering? Well, if you're not inspired by civil engineering by seeing a bridge like this, then I don't think you ever will be.